our seventh and final podcast is entitled the Van Hoff Equation. And again, I think that once you see this Van Hoff Equation, you'll be like, I have done this before. It just has some new factors in it. So let's take a look at what it is and what it's going to tell us. Well, here we have our Van Hoff Equation. Oh my goodness, this looks a heck of a lot like the clausius clapeyron equation or the Arrhenius equation that we saw when we were doing our rate constants. Right? This looks a heck of a lot like those, except that we are relating equilibria constants, or Ks, with our temperatures. And so, in this case, those are going to give us enthalpy changes. So again, right, remember that we just need to make sure that we're using the correct value for R, right? And our R is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin, or 8.3145 times 10 to the minus third kilojoules per mole Kelvin, right? Depending on whether we want our answer to be in joules or kilojoules, we need to use the right R. Beyond that, it's just using those same skills that we've learned so many other times using this equation of making sure that K2 corresponds with T2, K1 with T1, and making sure that we plug everything into our calculators in the right order and everything to get these right. Well, some general ideas about the Van Hoff equation are shown here with our nitrogen and hydrogen coming to equilibrium with ammonia again. And we've got our enthalpy change for that is negative 92.2 kilojoules. So this is an exothermic reaction. Right, I've also given the equilibria constant as six times 10 to the fifth. And what if we wanted to calculate K at 100 degrees Celsius? We could do that. Right, and we're gonna do a sample problem where we actually work through the values. But right, we want to make sure when we do these problems, right, remember to convert our Kelvin, our temperatures into Kelvin. And in this case, our enthalpy, I'm either gonna convert our enthalpy into joules or I'm gonna convert my R into kilojoules. One of those two has to occur. All right, if we went through this and I calculated K at this, notice that my K is now four times 10 to the second. Our K has gone down as I increased the temperature. I right, notice that this is the only thing that can affect our equilibria constant, right, from our Le Chatelier's principle is temperature. And in this case, our temperature decreased our value for our equilibria constant. It became smaller because this is a negative delta H. And so if we had a positive delta H, our K would increase with temperature. All right, let's work a sample problem using the Van Hoff equation to finish off our chapter. Here's our sample problem. And so we're going to start with our equilibria expression there that we have two sulfur trioxides in equilibrium, two sulfur dioxides in an oxygen. We know the K at 627 degrees Celsius. What is K at 555? All right, well, first off, we're gonna calculate our enthalpy change of reaction, just like we did back in chapter seven, where we do products minus reactants. So the delta H for our reaction is gonna be equal to, all right, so my products is I have two moles of SO2, times its enthalpy of formation. And so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find its enthalpy of formation, which was negative 269.8 kilojoules per mole. All right, then I'm gonna to add to that one mole of oxygen, and I can find that, oh, all right, recall enthalpy values, and for an element, it's gonna be zero kilojoules per mole. All right, then we're gonna take all of that, we're gonna subtract off my reactants, two moles of sulfur trioxide, and that is negative 395.7 kilojoules per mole. All right, so the delta H of reaction for this is going to be equal to positive 
kilojoules. All right, so now we have the enthalpy change. Now we can use that in our Van Hoff equation on our next slide to solve for the equilibrium constant at 555 degrees Celsius. So let's set up our Van Hoff equation, which is again the natural log of K2 over K1 is equal to our delta H over R times one over T1 minus one over T2. So we've got the natural log of, all right, K2, I'm just gonna call that one the one that we don't know for right now. And so K1 is 1.32, that was in our problem, is equal to the delta H, 251.8 kilojoules per mole. All right, and since that's in kilojoules, let's do our R in kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And then so my one over T1 right, is gonna be 900 Kelvin. Don't forget to convert these into Kelvins. My T2 is 828 Kelvin. All right, now we gotta do algebra skills. So you got the natural log of K2 minus the natural log of 1.32 is equal to negative 2.93. The natural log of my K2 is equal to negative 2.93 plus 0.28. That's the natural log of 1.32 or negative 2.65. And so K2 is e to the negative 2.65, which is 0 0.07. And we have solved for our K2. And so we can also then think, does this make sense, right? When we change the temperature, should we have decreased our equilibria constant? The answer to that is yes. So that's a good checkpoint that this is probably the correct answer. All right, that ends another chapter here in Chem 2. So congratulations, let me know if you have any questions or any trouble with any of the problems going forward, and I'll see you for chapter 18.